start with the phenomenon of Alibaba and, and what it is. How can anyone in retail compete with the likes of an Alibaba or, for that matter, an Amazon? Well, they, they are phenomenal, and I think you'd have to say that both, both of the gentlemen running those companies are geniuses. They come up, and not only are they in the retail business, there are many other businesses. Uh, and again, uh, one thing I will say is that the one thing that they don't have, with now some new exceptions, is they don't have a physical connection with the customer. They, they have, a, you know, they have a, a, an internet connection. And I think that's the one, advantages, one advantage that the, the stores, the physical stores have, is that they have a connection. But they have to connect with something the customer wants. And we have lots of, we have lots of bricks and mortar retailers that are doing well. But, but if you don't adjust to what the needs of the new customer are, then you're going to go out of business. You know, this is a, Penny's is a company that's over 100 years old, Sears the same way. You know, if you go back 50, 60 years, you know, there's like 10% of the Fortune 500 companies around, and they go out of business because they don't stay up to speed. And I think that pet, whether it's Penny's or, or Macy's or any of the other retailers, they constantly have to try to understand what does the customer need. They have a physical presence, and that physical presence means they have to connect with the customer when she walks or he, or he walks into the door. And what does that mean? It means having the right merchandise. It means having the ability to communicate that, uh, that point of view to the customer. And it has, you have to have the good, good pricing. But when you stop and think that what a store can do, it right. can have salespeople that can connect with you. It can right. have visual displays that makes it exciting. But by the way, if you should be clear, if, if you had no bricks and mortar stores around, right. the internet business would be a lot less than what it is today or what it will be in the future. Well, interesting, but are you surprised in the course of your career that we all, it's certainly true for me, have gotten so used to ordering online without the physical presence so quickly. I mean, we can return stuff for free and things like that. And it, it seems that the online people have gotten a very far away in a very short time without the physical presence. Yeah, well, they're, they basically are not involved in product itself. They're a, basically a distribution center. And I think they all need to go back 10 years ago and thanks Mr. Jobs, because without the iPhone, this would not be possible. This business is multiplied, not because so much of them, although they are very creative, but the iPhone has allowed people to do things they couldn't do on, on their home. They can take that phone with them. They can check the prices when they're in the store. That's why when they go to a mall today, instead of going to five or six stores, they go to two or three stores because this iPhone, which the mastermind Mr. Jobs created, changed the world. And that's why you have Uber and without that, wouldn't have Uber. So it is a transformational issue. And if those companies, and by the way, I would also add that a Penny's and Macy's and, and Neiman Marcus all have a very big internet business. Right. I think Neiman's does 30 percent. But when that customer buys on the Neiman Marcus website, that's one less trip she comes into the store. Or he right. comes into the store. And when they come into the store, they yeah. buy what they wanted to buy on the website, but they also buy other things.